the entire CCS community have a bunch of pioneers involved that believe in the cause. And they really do this not because they want to make a billion bucks. They do this because they believe it's important to save the globe. How could we create a technology to fight climate change out of the process that we knew that the Earth had been implementing for millions of years to permanently store CO2? Nordic Energy Research traveled through the Nordics, talking to thought leaders and exploring the potential of CCS, carbon capture and storage. We have a long history of applying Nordic solutions to global challenges. We need all of the technologies available to slow down climate change. And CCS and negative emissions, they can both remove and reduce permanently the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. The carbon dioxide budget is the amount of CO2 that we can emit and still meet the climate target. And this budget is exhausted already seven years from now, and that will leave a gigantic climate debt to our grandchildren. It's a fact that we will not meet the global climate goals without carbon capture and storage. For the hard to abate sectors, we have to implement this type of technology. We need to uh, capture the CO2, put it under pressure, liquefy it, uh, put it in pipelines to the, to the shore, get ships to pick it up, sell it to the North Sea or other places where we can actually uh, you know, pump it into depleted oil fields. It's a whole value chain and all links in that chain is a huge challenge. But we are here to try to meet that challenge. Norway is one of the pioneers in the world for CO2 storage. The CO2 can be stored in geological stores off the Norwegian coast. We are still at the demonstration phase. We are at our first commercial demonstration project in Norway, if you don't count Sleipner and Snövit, that have already been operating for years. We're for storage working with the oil industry, which is an industry we're not accustomed to working with at all, but still has the key capabilities and knowledge on how to store CO2 permanently. We have a long tradition of collaboration in the Nordic region. We have different skill sets, we have different technologies, we have different emission sources, we also have different geology, making it maybe necessary for some countries to collaborate. So for example, Finland cannot store CO2 within their territories. So they need to transport the CO2 to Sweden or Denmark or Norway to store it. What we do is take CO2 that's been captured either from emissions or directly from the atmosphere. We inject it into specific geologic formation and there it permanently turns to stone. Basalts, the geologic formations that we target, they are one of the most common rock types on Earth. We find them on about 5% of the continents, on the majority of the ocean floor. So the global capacity is huge on bringing this technology to scale. A decade ago we started setting up a facility where we use the Carfix method to mineralize. On Power has continuously been capturing and injecting otherwise emitted CO2 from their power plant. And now we are taking this uh, process to full scale. The plant will be fully zero emission in just a couple of years. If we just consider the, the basalt we find in Iceland, we could store over 100 times the amount we globally need to store until 2060 to meet our climate goals. Our technology, of course, is not a silver bullet allowing us to reach all those goals, but it is an integral part of the journey ahead. Policies and framework is a very important issue for CCS. They enable incentives to actually do this on a commercial basis. They provide a baseline for liability, for accountability and for transparency, which is crucial to make the project work. They are the, the instruments that enables these technologies to become climate change mitigation technologies, value chains. The European Union implemented a CCS directive to regulate storage in particular, and all of the member states and Norway, Iceland and Liechtenstein being EEA members have transposed that framework into national law. So there is the framework to store CO2 permanently as part of a CCS value chain. And there is also a framework for for counting and kind of quantifying, verifying and, and reporting the amounts of CO2 stored. Having had a carbon capture pilot plant, the most important thing that we have learned is this is possible. We are a society of users, right? Uh, junkies of consumption. Every day the citizens give us their waste, the residual part, and we turn that into energy and it's vast amounts of energy.
It's an environmental problem and we try to turn that environmental problem into good, clean energy. We emit CO2 and that is our next target. We want to treat that as well so that we can become carbon neutral and probably also carbon negative. Our ambition is actually to introduce full-scale carbon capture at ARC. We have a lot of cooperation in the Nordics. Just looking at the utility side, ARC and uh, Fortum Oslo Verme have been uh, partners to us in different ways. If they can make carbon capture and we can make carbon capture, then maybe we could visualize a transport system in pipelines for the liquefied carbon uh, to be stored underground somewhere. You will need carbon in the future economy, so in, in that way we are able to turn a waste product into new building blocks for the future. Different ways allow us to reach net zero, although we don't have all the solutions for removing everything. There are some emissions that we really can't get rid of, for example leakage of laughing gas from sewage treatment. Negative emissions are required to compensate for the residual emissions which society can't avoid. Thus we need to compensate by sucking C2 from the atmosphere and storing it permanently. The clue with negative emissions is that you are removing CO2 from the atmosphere. So for CCS, you are reducing emissions by taking emissions out of fossil, for example, emissions and putting it back where it came from. So it's kind of a null-sum game. While if you are capturing directly from air or you are capturing from biomass, you are removing something in the atmosphere and you're putting it into the ground. BEX, which is Bioenergy Carbon Capture and Storage, or uh, BioCCS, is one of these uh, carbon sucker technologies. Removing CO2 from the atmosphere with the help of growing trees, burning them, and then instead of emitting the CO2 to the atmosphere, you capture the CO2 and, and you store it in geological formations where it will stay forever. We are part of the project supporting the development of chemical looping combustion. In chemical looping you don't mix the air and the fuel. So you add the air to one reactor, the fuel to another reactor and circulate the particles between these two reactors. And in this way you can get pure CO2 without a very costly and energy intensive gas separation. There isn't really a well-developed framework for quantifying, verifying and reporting negative emissions. What we really do need is, is a regulatory framework to take care of that on the same terms basically as CCS because that will increase the trust the market have in value chain of technologies. I think the key important thing with negative emissions is to bring in place the incentives so that the technology development really starts and big plants are built. You don't make it anywhere without collaboration. And you see that collaboration both between private stakeholders and public entities making public-private partnerships. It's not learning from one single technology or one stakeholder or adopting one national uh, framework. It's more kind of cherry-picking what works. And it's also about adopting into national frameworks whatever is natural and fits the natural resources available in that country, what is the storage situation, what kind of emission sources do you have. Take advantage of all the mistakes that we have already made and all the money that we poured into projects that maybe didn't end up being successful or deployed, but that we learned immense amounts of technology or regulation or policy. Uh, perspectives from. In the Nordics what we have is quite open societies, especially in the cooperation between university, research, science and the business life. You need you know, talented young people to know that it's there and it's an extremely interesting industry to work in. We also cooperate with uh, different universities on how they should develop education of new engineers uh, so that we can see to that we have engineers with the right competence that we require in the future. The entire CCS community has been a very welcoming, sharing and caring community, which makes it easier when you are the next guy in line trying to deploy a project and trying to learn from others. We also put a lot of focus on training next generation scientists, engineers, tradespeople. We need even more human capital in five years than we need today and this will just grow exponentially. So it's extremely important that we continue on this journey as well. <laughs>